just ahead this week on Money Matters. Three of China, Japan, and the rapidly advancing Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. Where does each country stand? Cherry blossoms are in full bloom in Japan, and with this comes some distinctive marketing tactics. And the unwelcome yellow dust from China. We look at the environmental costs and windows of opportunity. What stories matter in Asia? We'll look at the changing landscape of business in the region next on Money Matters. Hello everyone, I'm Hans Schadl. Welcome to this first edition of Money Matters. We'll start off with some of the top business stories in Northeast Asia this week and around the world. Some grim projections about the state of the global economy came out from the International Monetary Fund. The IMF's latest World Economic Outlook says the world remains trapped in economic secular stagnation. This means the living standards of future generations will be lower than previously expected and national debt burdens will be harder to reduce. Countries are also finding it harder than ever to create conditions for economic growth in ways that do not cause high inflation. The IMF says growth in advanced economies is expected at about 1.6 percent per year for the rest of this decade. Korea has now made its plans official to join the new Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, or AIIB, being launched by China. The AIIB has generated some tension lately as the United States is not joining the bank and has also discouraged its key allies from joining. Korea, in turn, is joining several key American allies, including the United Kingdom, France, Germany, and Italy, that are among the founding members of the AIIB. Shares in Korean iron and steel companies have risen in recent days on the news that Seoul will indeed sign on to the bank, as Korea's membership in the bank is expected to open up new opportunities, especially for these industries. Despite the gloomy IMF predictions, stock markets across Asia have rallied this month. The key stock indexes in Seoul, Tokyo and Hong Kong have all been making new highs, with central banks pumping cash into their economies and keeping the costs of borrowing and interest rates very low. Last week, the Bank of Japan decided to continue its massive monetary stimulus program on grounds that this will keep the world's third largest economy in a recovery phase. Asian stock traders have also shrugged off some weakness this month in the United States employment numbers. China's Shanghai Composite Index hit a new seven-year high recently, while the Hang Seng Index in Hong Kong surged to its highest level since May of 2008. On March 26, the Korean government announced it will indeed take part in the China-led Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, five days ahead of the deadline imposed by China. But even past that final date of submission, countries have still been signing up, putting the total number of member states now at over 50. On our front page, we look at how membership in this multilateral bank will affect Korea, China and Japan, and where each country stands on the matter. Seoul announced on March 27th its membership to the Asian Infrastructure and Investment Bank, eight months after Beijing invited it to be a founding member. The Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, or AIIB, was proposed by China against the existing dominance of the World Bank, led by the U.S., and the Asian Development Bank, led by Japan. The AIIB's initial subscribed capital is $50 billion, but the aim is to increase that capacity to $100 billion down the line. Facing the potential growth of Beijing's influence in global finance, Washington and Tokyo have both been skeptical about the new bank. We all want that this bank will truly be an international development bank, not simply a Chinese bank. Despite such concerns, the AIIB is largely seen as a success in its efforts so far. 48 countries signed up by the March 31st deadline, and other nations, including Iran and the UAE, applied following that, putting the final number over 50 countries. Following this unexpected success, Tokyo is also expected to discuss the issue with China in a finance minister's meeting scheduled for June. 对于全球来说，或者对于世界各国来说，都是一个互利共赢的倡议。There are 
a lot of mixed interests surrounding this bank, so we'll talk to experts from each country now today on the program. Joining us first with a perspective from China is Chen Li, a full-time lecturer at the Korean National Diplomatic Academy here in Seoul. 那么主要这个，我觉得首先呢，就是AIAB本身它的名称就是亚洲基础设施建设银行。所以呢，首先是通过呃帮助亚洲各国提供一些基础设施建设方面的资金的支持，那么帮助亚洲实现共同的发展。
Ultimately, One Belt, One Road captures China's aspirations to take a lead alongside the United States in driving the global economy, especially in the developing world. It goes back to Chinese President Xi Jinping's policies labeled the Silk Road Economic Belt and the 21st Century Maritime Silk Road Initiative. Xi Jinping wants to ease the way for up-and-coming Chinese companies to build new roads, new railway lines, new ports, new power grids in the emerging market economies of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. And when you combine the emerging AAIB member states with the road and belt target countries, it adds up to territory covering 65 countries on three continents and encompassing 4.4 billion people. China is also working to initiate loans and currency arrangements aimed at making the yuan a top global currency, even rivaling the dollar, the euro, and the yen. And in this sense, One Belt, One Road signifies the most important and far-reaching economic project China has ever put forward. And now let's take a look at some economic trends in and outside of Korea in numbers. We have for this week a study on so-called working dents, referring to working students here in Korea. Now, it's not hard to find such students these days. Research shows that the numbers have peaked to significant levels in 2012 and has maintained those figures since. Now, according to Hyundai Research Institute, they've been tracking the numbers of students between the ages of 15 and 29 who attend school while also holding a part-time job. Since 2004, when they first began the research, the number of working dents stood at 660,000 students. But last year, the number was tallied at 738,000 students, posting a rough 10% increase over the past 10 years. Now, these students have cited a number of reasons for holding a job while going to school. They use the money to pay for school expenses, as well as to provide them with a little more cash for their personal use as well. But many of these working dents face new pressures when it comes time to graduate and find a full-time job. Trends in business, of course, evolve and change rapidly by the day. And now we have some of the most eye-catching stories online with Saw Mizoran. Hello, Mizoran. Hi, yes, they're the bits in business that you don't want to miss, reflecting greater trends and developments. And on our first issue, let's begin with Korea. Tourist hotspot Myeongdong is busier than ever with Chinese customers. Popular cosmetics and clothing stores are packed with Chinese visitors. And it's estimated that they account for up to 70% of customers at restaurants in the area. Because of this, and because Chinese customers usually buy more per transaction than others, vendors are doing everything they can to lure them in, for example, by hiring Chinese-speaking staff and holding special promotion events open only to Chinese passport holders. Meanwhile, over in Japan, the so-called company animal tales are getting popular on Twitter. They're essentially classic fairy tales, but reinterpreted from a corporate point of view and given a more realistic ending. For example, in the Little Mermaid version, the Little Mermaid asks the sea witch to become a full-time employee. She gets her wish and is very happy at first, but soon realizes that her monthly wage is now lower, she doesn't get paid for overtime and doesn't have any days off. The satire reflects the Catch-22 situation faced by many irregular workers, wanting the security of a full-time job, but having to accept poorer working conditions once they do become a full-time employee. Now, staying with Japan, I've had the chance to visit Tokyo recently for its cherry blossom season. Take a look. Spring is cherry blossom season in Japan, and locals and tourists alike celebrate it by having picnics under cherry blossom trees. I'm here at Ueno Park in Tokyo, famous for its beautiful cherry blossoms. And it's that time of the year when the beautiful scenic flowers line the streets of Japan. And it's also the perfect opportunity to get your hands on some limited edition goods put out by many companies. It's not just trees that turn cherry blossom pink, but the shops as well because many of them put out goods in time for the cherry blossom season. This store in Asakusa sells traditional Japanese sweets, and for April, they've introduced a confectionery wrapped in cherry blossom leaves. It's 
Likewise, from beer to jellies and cakes, many companies are seizing the opportunity to lure in more customers with their special cherry blossom goods. So Miserang, this is similar to the limited edition goods that are put out sometimes at the Christmas season? Exactly. And when I was there, it seemed that you know every second or at least every third food and beverage store had some kind of cherry blossom related product. And even clothing stores that had cherry blossom related t-shirts and accessories and so on. <laughs> ah, thank you for your report. Thanks for having me. One of the buzzwords you'll hear a lot in China these days is air apocalypse, and it's an indication of just how bad pollution levels can get in China, especially in the capital city of Beijing. Now, the Chinese government has been spending more and more amounts of money to try to help alleviate this growing problem. Our own Im Yun He went to China last week, and here she That's is right. with her report. Right. So, Hello. as you mentioned, uh, along with facing rapid economic development, China also has been struggling with air pollution. Now, I recently went to Beijing to get a closer look at just how bad the problem is and what kind of costs are involved. But what I found there is that along with the problems also comes new opportunities. So, let's take a closer look at that. It's almost impossible to walk the streets of Beijing without wearing a mask. With the smog and yellow dust blanketing the city, it's hard to gain visibility. In the spring, smog produced from factories and yellow dust mix in together, forcing schools to close temporarily and even companies to suspend work. After a day of rain, the skies clear up, offering a clear view of the city. But even so, existing conditions prevail, with pollution still lingering. I'm here in a parking lot in Beijing and you can see with just one swipe how much dust there is. Now, this includes yellow dust as well as fine particulate matter, but that just goes to show the truly bad level of air pollution here in China. China is said to lose roughly 1.2% of its GDP to air pollution-related costs. This mounts to roughly $73 billion a year. If indirect costs such as health care expenses are factored in, these figures tally up to almost 3.8% of GDP, reaching $220 billion. Last year, the Chinese government poured roughly $270 billion into measures to improve the environment, including its smog problem. The number of foreign tourists who visited Beijing last year stood at roughly 260 million, but many returned to their home countries with rather negative sentiments. When you, when you go down with the plane, you can see already the, the smog and you can feel when you go out, it makes you a little bit tired. You cannot see like very far and you feel like a little bit more um, tired and you have a little headache always. It's you, you hardly could see uh, buildings on the 300 meters or 400 meters away. So it was a really very terrible day. China has cited an increase in pollutants, unfavorable weather conditions for smog dissipation and winter heating as some of the reasons behind its polluted air. So I saw that this government, this government, has made a big decision. They have to reduce the economic growth of the country to solve this problem. Because this problem is very serious. These people who have caused the damage to the body are deciding what is the decision. 决定他们说孩子这些猪粪化学猪粪尤其是现在为什么大家都比较关心这个雾霾和PM2.5对人的危害呢 Now a total of 8,500 people die prematurely every year in major cities across China due to air pollution Now as a response, the market for air purifiers and similar products is expected to grow in the near future and Korean businesses are quickly breaking in For the past three months Environment-related stocks have experienced great performance, along with the rise in fine particulate matter blowing in from China. 
Most companies in downtown Beijing run air purifiers, with each office running at least one. Before the 2000s, products related to air quality weren't considered to be essential home appliances. But since then, the market has expanded rapidly. Based on this changing environment within China, Korean companies have latched on to this opportunity, creating a stronger platform for exports. According to Korea International Trade Association, last year the number of air purifiers exported to China was 3.6 million, up threefold from 2012. By 2020, the market is expected to expand by an average 50% annually. Less than 1% of Chinese households own an air purifier. And for that reason, experts say Korean companies are facing a market with great potential. Purisys, an air purifier manufacturer that launched operations in China last year, recorded roughly $0.9 million in sales. Many countries see China's efforts to improve its environment as a window of opportunity for its local industries. With environment-friendly exports and technologies, China has become a platform for growth. 治理或对付打击污染这是一个大家都比较关心的一个问题所以我看到就是说从这三个方面一个是科学研究一个是就是说这个技术上对它支持然后就是说这个法律就是真正做到一法之物和科学之物 so Yunhi, experiencing Beijing firsthand, a city I've never visited actually, just what is it like being there with this pollution? Right, so coming off the plane, you can feel the effects right away. So my eyes were hurting. Um, some people even we interviewed even described it as eating sand, so very unpleasant. Uh, it's kind of hard to breathe at times as well. But because of this environment, we also noticed that Chinese customers were looking to purchase air purifiers, and they're willing to spend a significant amount of money on it, such as $2,000. You know, it's a very large portion of money that they are willing to spend on this because it is a very prominent issue. Right, and as we know all too well here in Seoul, the pollution mm -hmm. levels from China have a direct impact on the quality of life here nationwide and I think right. that creates a lot of business opportunities for Korean companies in the domestic market as well as China right right so companies that manufacture things like environmental facilities or car exhaust uh, reducers they will definitely be seeing benefits as well and alternative sources of energy such as nuclear power companies that focus on that on more eco-friendly ideas they will definitely be seeing some benefit and some growth as well in the future yeah we all know Yunhi air pollution knows no borders it is right. a global problem mm -hmm. and I guess and now we're looking at international business to see what kinds of innovations can try to help address or mitigate that exactly. problem. Exactly. All right, Im Yun Hee, thank you so much for your report. Maybe my pleasure. And that wraps up our first edition of Money Matters. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll bring you plenty of stories as they unfold each week here in Asia and also give you a view of the changing landscape of business in this dynamic region. That's it. I'm Hans Schottel. Thank you so much for watching.